Welcome everyone back to the week six, our final week, the recap video. Um, I already did one of these videos and I did examples one, two, and three. This was all about the U substitution. So if you haven't watched that, uh, please go ahead and check that out, especially if you uh, need a little bit more practice or would like to you know, see some more U substitutions. Um, this video is gonna be about the areas between curves. So I'm gonna be doing examples four and five here. Example four, we have a few nice pictures given to us. And then example five, no pictures given to us. And one of our things is, well, how can we sketch the picture and then use that to determine you know if we should be integrating with respect to x or with respect to y what should we be doing here so again in this video we're doing examples four and five and if you haven't seen examples one through three check that out in my other video so without further ado let's do example number four so in particular i'm going to start off with this uh shaded region right here we have y equals x squared given to us we have y equals four minus x squared and we're trying to figure out the shaded area here um, so, okay, well, for any shaded area, we're going to go ahead and do an integral, right? Because this is kind of area between curves here. We need starting and stopping points. Uh, so usually, right, the formula looks something like from A to B of F of X minus G of X DX. So A and B are our starting and ending points. And then remember, F of X, this is supposed to be the big function. And then g of x, this is supposed to be the small function. And when I say big and small, right, because these are functions, you know, y of x, right, and functions g of x, right, so, you know, usually these are written y equals and y equals, right, when I say big and small, I mean big and small y values. So in particular, if I was to look at these, right, 4 minus x squared, for a while, four minus x squared seems to be the big function. It's kind of up here, it has bigger y values than y equals x squared. So that's this one down here. And then at this point right here, kind of there's a swap that happens. It changes up on us. And then after that, actually y equals x squared is now the big function. It has bigger y values and y equals four minus x squared is actually the small function. It has kind of smaller y values. So we need to go ahead and in order to figure out the total area here, I'm gonna kind of break this up and I'm gonna to try to figure out what is the area here. And I'm gonna calculate out this and then I'm gonna take a break, right? And then we're gonna go ahead and calculate out the area here and we're gonna add those two together to get the total area. But this is gonna be the strategy here. So, okay, well, let's go ahead and just figure out the area uh, of this first piece. So I'm going to just call this maybe A1 or something like that, right, for our first area. Uh, and so let's try to set up an integral that we could calculate out, uh, and that would give us the area there. So the area for A1 here. So, okay, I guess the first thing we need to know, where does it start and where does it stop, right? This A and B here, how do we find those? Well, A, kind of our starting X value here seems to be at X equals zero, right? It doesn't, so the shaded area isn't anywhere on the left-hand side, right, where we have negative X values. So X equals zero, this Y axis, this seems to be exactly where we're starting. And then this first area stops, right? And then we have to change things up wherever these uh, two functions intersect. So in order to figure out where they intersect, right, algebraically, we need to set them equal to each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and set my x squared equal to my four minus x squared. And I'm gonna be able to solve for the x value where these things intersect. So let's go ahead and rearrange this. I get two x squared equals four, x squared equals two, and then x is gonna be equal to plus or minus the square root of two. And actually, if we were to continue this over here, you can see that they do actually intersect over here as well. So that's gonna be the negative square root of two. Here, this one's gonna be the positive square root of two. So this place where they actually intersect is at the positive square root of two. So that's the largest x value, right, that's in my first area, this a1 that I'm calling it. So my large value here, this is going to be the square root of 2. That's my b value. Now, again, my big function on this piece is going to be my blue function up here. That's going to be my 4 minus x squared. So again, this kind of has the bigger y values. So 4 minus x squared is my f of x. And then my g of x, my smaller function, well, that's going to be this x squared, this green one up here. So x squared, so I need to subtract away that. And then we have my dx. So now I've set up an integral, and this is really the hard part uh, in order to figure out what that area is. So let's go ahead and calculate this out. 
uh, fairly quickly. So let me go ahead and simplify here. 4 minus 2x squared dx. Take the antiderivative, so I get 4x minus 2 thirds x cubed. And we're evaluating this from 0 to root 2. And you can double check, right? If I take the derivative, I should get back to where I started. So this is the correct antiderivative. When I plug in 0, I just get out 0. And so, okay, let's plug in root 2. So this gives me 4 root 2s minus two thirds, and then I need to take root two and I need to cube it. So, right, so this is root two times root two times root two, which is kind of a silly way to write it. Um, but the big thing that I wanted to point out is that two of these root twos, root two times root two, this is just the same thing as two. So these nicely will cancel out a little bit and just give us two. So, okay, it's not a very beautiful answer, but uh, our final result is four root twos minus a four-thirds of a root two. So again, this is me just kind of multiplying these two four, twos together here to give us four. Uh, we already have the three in the denominator here, and then we have, oops, one more root two. Did a bad job with writing a two there. All right, so that's the area for the first piece. Now we need to calculate out the area for the second piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this maybe A2 temporarily. So in order to get the total area, all of it, we need to have the area of these two pieces. So my second area is going to be, again, some integral. We have a big and a small function. Remember, kind of the roles are reversed here. Uh, so our big function is this green one here. It's the y equals x squared. So that's my big function, my f of x here. So this is x squared. And then we need to subtract away g of x. So g of x, my kind of smaller function, that's going to be my 4 minus x squared. So I need to subtract away 4 minus x squared. Now we also need to figure out what are our limits of integration, right? What's our lower bound? What's our upper bound? And so, okay, well, it looks like this area starts exactly at that red dot there. So that's root two where these things intersect. So, okay, we, we calculated that out here. And then where does it stop? Well, it stops at this nice vertical line here, but I don't really see, you know, there, there's no value given there. So I guess the, the big thing, it stops where, you know, this function, my 4 minus x squared here, where this intersects the x-axis. So, okay, I need to figure out that. That seems to be the only really defining quality uh, of this one here. So let's go ahead and try to figure out where it intersects the x-axis. Remember, that has height 0. So that's the same thing. The x-axis is the same as y equals 0. So now if I set those two equal to each other, right, y equals 4 minus x squared, equal to y equals zero. Now we can go ahead and rearrange. So I get four is equal to x squared. And so this gives me that x is gonna be either plus or minus two. And because it's on the you know positive side, we know that this is gonna be x equals two. So it looks like this one stops at x equals two. Oops. So again, now we've done the hard part. We've set up what we need to actually evaluate. Let's do the antiderivative here. Uh, actually, before I do that, let's simplify one more line here just to get all of our like terms together. So let's see, we have x squared and, oh, let me distribute this negative here. So I'm gonna subtract away four and I'm gonna subtract away negative x squared. So that's gonna really be like positive x squared there we go, and so we have x squared plus x squared, so that's gonna be two x squared minus four uh, dx. This is gonna look quite similar to our other antiderivative, probably just off by a negative sign here, so two thirds x cubed minus four x. And so this we need to take from root two all the way up to two. So again, this should look very familiar to this up here. It's just kind of uh, the negatives and positives are swapped. Let's go ahead and plug in two everywhere I see an x. So I have two thirds times eight minus eight, and then we're gonna subtract away when I plug in root two. So I'm gonna take two thirds, uh, and in fact, we already plugged in root two to this. Uh, we have the answer up there, so let me actually just use that. Um, otherwise, I have to do with kind of all the same simplification. Oh, but that one was when it was negative, right, and flipped around. So okay, I'm gonna be safe, let's just do it again. So I have two thirds, and then we have root two times root two times root two. 
So that's going to be 2 times root 2, right? Because two of them kind of uh, will cancel out there and give us just 2. And then let's see, we have minus 4 root 2s. Let's do one line of simplification. Uh, let's see, 2 times 8 would be 16 thirds minus 8. Uh, let's see, minus 4 thirds times a root 2, and then minus a negative there, so this is going to be plus 4 root 2s. So that is my second area there. And so overall, if you want the total area, we're going to go ahead and add these two together. So we have our A1 here, we have our A2 here, and we add those two together. So my overall answer, the total area, is going to be this 4 root 2 minus 4 thirds root 2 plus 16 thirds. And right, I'm not going to really simplify this down at all. We're kind of done with the calculus here. So I'm just going to go ahead and write the answer and not simplify at all. Of course, it can be simplified. Uh, but again, kind of we're, we haven't done uh, calculus here for a, a second. We've just been, you know, plugging things in and simplifying and all that sort of stuff. So this is what I'm going to write as my final answer. All right, so again, the big storyline here and the real takeaway that I want you to get from this is that when the functions intersect like this, when the functions are equal to each other on this interval, right, you do need to be careful about what is your big and small function. That's really kind of the storyline here. Let's go ahead and take a look at another one. So this one, we have a bunch of x equals stuff. x equals, and we have a function with y's in it. Uh, and then we have x equals, and we have another function with y's in it. So remember, this is kind of this the fact that you can do an integral with respect to x, but you can also do an integral with respect to y. So the other area formula that we have is that you can do the integral with respect to y. And I think I use maybe like c and d. And for here, you can use, I'm going to just stick kind of the same here. I'm going to do f of y minus g of y. And so again, this needs to be your big function, and this needs to be your small function. But because we have f of y and g of y, it's no longer, when I say big and small, I don't mean, you know, the y values, but I mean the x values, because, right, this is x equals a function of y's, and x equals another function of y's. So when I say big and small, I mean big and small x values. So this is where you have to be careful with this. So Let's go ahead and try to set this up. So we're going to have an integral, and I need to do my big minus my small, right? So, okay, looking at this, it seems like, okay, here's one uh, maybe right here. And that's going to be this x equals 2y minus y squared. Uh, so that's this one. And then my smaller one here, oops, I gave it away. I didn't mean to do that. That's my y squared minus 4y. And so, yes, I, I claim that the blue one here, the 2y minus y squared, is my big function. So 2y minus y squared. And then we need to go ahead and subtract away the smaller function. And that's going to be uh, this y squared minus 4y. And the reason why this is the case right, is because we need to think about the big and small x values. So in this case, these blue x values here they are farther to the right than the x values for this function. So again, when I say big and small x values, we need to look left and right. And remember in the x-axis here, kind of all of the big x values live far to the right. The smaller x values live farther to the left, you know, negative one, negative two, and so on and so forth. So that's why we have to set it up like this. So let's go ahead and maybe simplify down. And then there's one last piece that I need to do before uh, I do my antiderivative. So I can go ahead and distribute this negative here. And so let's see, I'm going to get 2y minus y squared, minus y squared, and then this is going to be plus 4y. And so we can combine like terms here, and I'm going to get 6y minus 2y squared. Okay, that's not so bad. The last thing is that we need to figure out what are our bounds of integration. What is the C and D uh, stuff here? So I go back up here, and I need to know what is the Y value. Again, we're integrating with respect to Y. So now these bounds are Y values. We say, okay, what's the smallest Y value and what's the largest Y value that's a part of this region? So the smallest Y value seems to be down here. 
the largest y value seems to be up here. So this is going to be my c, and this is going to be my d. So I need to know, right, when do I start adding up the area, and when do I stop adding up the area? That's what these limits are telling us. So c, just by eyeballing it here, I mean, it really looks like it's 0. So I suspect that c is going to be 0. D, on the other hand, right, it's I don't have a scale here or anything, so it's maybe it's hard to tell. So I need to know basically when do these things intersect, right? So this point right here comes where these two curves intersect. And actually C does as well, right? If you look at C here, this is also where they intersect. So I hope to see that they intersect at zero and one other place. So again, when I'm trying to figure out when do they intersect, we need to set them equal to each other. So I'm going to do y squared minus 4y is equal to 2y minus y squared. And let's go ahead and try to rearrange this a little bit. I'm going to get 2y squared and minus 6y equals 0, combining like terms a bit. And now we can factor, right? So it looks like both of these terms have a 2 and a y that we can factor out. And then when I do that, I'm left with y minus 3. So there's two times when this is going to be equal to 0. Either if this piece is 0, so that's going to be at y equals 0, or when this piece equals 0. So that's going to be when y minus 3 is equal to 0. So that's when y is equal to 3. So now I know that that height right there is y equals 3. So that's going to be my d value, my upper bound of integration. And we've reconfirmed right, that my c value, this lower piece, really is 0. So it doesn't just look like it, but maybe it's you know, 0 0.001 or something like that. Uh, no, it's truly 0. And we saw this with the algebra. So OK, my upper bound here is going to be 3. Now we have the good setup. Let's do the calculus. So I'm going to do the antiderivative here. Uh, let's see, the 6 is along for the ride. When I raise my exponent by 1, this becomes y squared. And we need to multiply by the reciprocal of that new exponent there. This negative 2 is along for the ride, constant multiple there. We need to raise our exponent by 1 and multiply by the reciprocal of our exponent here. So that's going to be a 1 third. And we go from 0 to 3. There's a bit of simplification that can happen, right? The 6 and the 1 half does make 3. And then, uh, so let me just go ahead and simplify here. And I'm going to write this as 2 thirds. Now let's go ahead and evaluate from 0 to 3. So if I plug in 0, uh, we're just going to get out 0. If I plug in 3, on the other hand, let's see, I get 3 squared would be 9 minus 2 thirds and 3 cubed. Uh, well, that would be 27. So that's nice. Actually, there's a bit of cancellation there. So this is going to be 27 minus, and this is 2 times 9, right? Because 27 divided by 3 is just 9. And so this is going to be 27 minus 18. And so I get the final answer of 9. Again, these right here are the areas trapped between the two curves. And they truly are areas. So a good way to check your work, at least eyeball it, is that if you get a negative number, I would be very concerned, right? The area shouldn't be negative. Now, we dealt a long time with something called net area. And net area was allowed to be negative, right? In particular, if it was like below the x-axis or something like this. But this really is the area trapped between the curves. And therefore, right, it should always be a positive number. So if you ever get a negative number, go back and check your work and make sure that uh, you know you haven't made a silly sign error or something like that uh, somewhere in the problem. All right, so two problems down. I got one more for us here. Example number five. In this one, no picture is given to us. We have to make the picture. So sketch the region enclosed by these curves. Decide whether to integrate with respect to x or y. Then we're going to go ahead and find the area of the region. So I'm going to go ahead and start off. Right, It does say we need to sketch these things. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with a nice axis here. And some of these are easier to sketch than others. I'm going to do the easy ones first. Uh, so maybe like y equals 3, right? y equals 3. That one's not so bad. This is just a nice horizontal line, horizontal line, and it has height 3. So slope of 0, intercept is 3. Uh, let's do another one here. So uh, y plus x uh, is equal to 3. So this one I may go ahead and rearrange. and I'm going to make this y is equal to 3 minus x. So this one right here has a slope of negative 1 and an intercept at 3. So, okay, intercept at 3 and a slope of negative 1. So if I go over 1, I go down 1. Over 1, down 1. Over 1, down 1. And this is kind of making a nice straight line. Again, it's, it is an equation of a line. And so it looks something like this. 
So the last one, maybe the most difficult, I guess I'm running out of uh, pen color, so I'll use red here, is y equals 2 root x. So I know kind of what the square root looks like, but again, kind of any time uh, you need to sketch something uh, and you're at all hesitant about what it looks like, go back to the point plotting method, right? So plug in different values of x and see what you get for values of y. So, okay, let's go ahead and try this. I'm going to plug in 0 for x. So if I plug in 0 for x, I get 2 times root 0. Uh, that's just going to be 0. So I'm going to go ahead and do 0, 0. Now let's go ahead and plug in 1 for x. So if I plug in 1 here, uh, let's see, I would get uh, root 1 would be 1 times 2. So 2 times 1, okay, 2. So, okay, this happens to intersect here. Uh, if I plugged in something like 3 or 4, it gets a little bit nasty. Uh, let me go ahead. Uh, well, 3 is nasty, but 4 is not so bad, right? Because I need to plug it into the square root function. So let me plug in 4. So all the way over here at 4. If I plugged in 4 into this, right? So let me go ahead. I'm starting to juggle too much here. So let me just write it down. So if I plugged in 4 here, I would get y is equal to 2 times 2. So that equals 4. So, okay, that'd be up here. So if I plug in 4, I get out 4. So my x and y value. All right, so now I'm starting to get a fairly decent sketch. Again, I know what the square root kind of looks like, um, but now I have some more specifics. All right, let me go ahead and erase this because it's kind of uh, muddying up my graph a little bit. So I need to sketch the region enclosed by these curves. And so, okay, the region that's, um, you know, enclosed by these curves, right, that's kind of touching a blue, a green, and a red seems to be this region right here. So this region is the only one that kind of is enclosed by these three curves. And we need to decide, right, we want to calculate out the area of this region. We need to decide, should I integrate with respect to X or with respect to Y? Then I need to go ahead uh, and evaluate out uh, the area. So I chose this one uh, because, I mean, it is more difficult, and it's my last problem for the video here. Um, but there's multiple correct ways to go about it. And in fact, you probably saw something like this in your web work, right, that you can go ahead and you can integrate this with respect to x, but it's going to take more time. So if you integrate this with respect to x, the problem that comes up is that halfway through or so, um, you change your small function right so again kind of this would be your big function and then this would be your small function this green one and then halfway through at this point here all of a sudden your small function changes and so you would need to actually break this up you know kind of very similar to our first problem where we had to break it up at a point and that came to time we had really no choice but we had to break it up at this point and say okay well in that case they just swapped all right, but we had to rewrite the integral and we had to calculate out two of these things. Now, on the other hand, if you integrated with respect to y, so let me erase these here, but if instead I integrated with respect to y and I tried to think about what is my big and small x values, right, and the functions for that, oof, my eraser is really doing work today. It's uh, just barely touches and it's like, no. And it, <laughs> anyway, sorry side thoughts so for big and small x values notice that this red function here always has the biggest x values so this would be big here and this green function would always have the smallest x values right so this is the smallest x value so this would be our small and then this blue one really just comes up as a limit of integration right it's kind of just a, a straight line kind of that kind of abruptly cuts it Right, so that y equals 3 would just kind of be one of our limits of integration. And again, this is very similar to what we did in this first one up here, where we just had this straight line here that just kind of cut it. It just stopped it right there at x equals 2. And the only place that that really appeared was in our limit of integration, x equals 2. And so I think that this is going to be easier. But again, kind of uh, if you really don't like integrating with respect to y, you have another option, right? You could go ahead and integrate this with respect to x. But I'm going to go ahead and give us a bit more practice. I saw a few people, you know, very specifically said integrating with respect to y was something that they wanted practice with. 
And so that's why I'm giving you two here. Uh, and I do think it's more difficult and something that we haven't really, you know, we only get one section on this where you integrate with respect to y. So this is maybe a, a good thing to practice here. So, all right, again, we need to set up an integral. We're going to integrate with respect to y. I'm going to have my f of y minus my g of y dy. So this is all going to be y values. I need to go ahead, right, this is my big function, this is my small function, and we need them set up as x equals some function with y's in it. So in particular, right, when I take a look at y equals 2 root x, I need to go ahead and solve this x equals. Kind of in my last problem, it was very nice, it was already set up x equals. So if I go back here, right, we already have x equals. So that's why we didn't need to do it in this case. But now I don't have x equals, so this creates an extra step for me, right, that I have to go ahead and solve this x equals. Luckily, it's not so bad, though, right? I'm going to go ahead and divide by 2, and then I'm going to square both sides. So this gives me y squared divided by 4. So my big function here, again, this is all this red stuff. Uh, this is going to be y squared my, over 4. For my small function, so again, my green one over here, this is my small function. Again, I need to solve this x equals. So here's my green function up here, and if I solve this x equals, I get x is equal to 3 minus y. So this one's really not so bad. So 3 minus y. Now I need to set up my bounds of integration, right? What are kind of the smallest and largest y values? Because again, I'm integrating with respect to y. So it looks like my smallest y value here is where these two intersect. And this happened to be exactly at 2. Kind of came across that almost by happenstance. And then my largest y value is with this y equals 3. It's this kind of straight line that kind of abruptly cuts and stops uh, this region. So y equals 3 is my upper limit. And again, this right here is the hardest bit, is actually setting these things up. Typically, the actual evaluation of these isn't so bad but just trying to figure out what to actually integrate. That's the, the difficult part. And unfortunately, you know, in life, that's the, the most important thing too. This is what we really need humans for, right? Because as you can imagine, calculators and computers and stuff like this, they're really good at evaluating integrals. Uh, they're quite good at doing this math uh, for us. However, right, we need to tell the computers, the calculators, what to evaluate. So this is a very important part, setting up, you know, what actually to evaluate. And then, you know, later after you leave this class, you can just hand this off to a computer and they'll be able to tell you the answer. So again, this is the most difficult part, but it's the part that we really need humans for. So let's go ahead and do the evaluation, though. Just one last uh, good time for practice. So again, we're going to raise up our exponent by 1, then multiply by the reciprocal of our new exponent. Here, let's see, the antiderivative of negative 3 is going to be negative 3y. And again, we raise up our exponent by 1, multiply by the reciprocal of our new exponent. This is really y to the first there, so that's why I get y squared. And we need to evaluate this from 2 to 3. So let's see, I'm going to have uh, 1 12th here. And if I take... Ooh, that's a horrible three. That's one of the worst threes I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, all right, if I plug in three right now, so I'm plugging in three, that's going to be three cubed is going to be 27. Uh, minus three times three, that's going to be nine. Let me go ahead and I'll just write nine here. Plus one half and three squared is going to be nine. So, okay, now we need to go ahead and subtract away if I plugged in 2. So, again, I have 1 12th, and if I take 2 and I cube it, that's going to be 8. Uh, minus 3 times 2, that's going to be 6. And then I have plus a half, and 2 squared is going to be 4. So, something like this. Let me go ahead and simplify down maybe just one more line. I probably won't get it fully simplified here, uh, but just one more line to clean things up a little bit. 27 over 12 minus 9 plus 9 halves. And then I'm going to distribute that negative there. So this is going to be negative. Uh, let's see, it looks like there's a 4 that cancels out here. So I'm going to have, let's see, 2 thirds. And again, if I distribute that negative, I get plus 6. So I'm distributing this negative to each piece here. And then I get minus 2. So darn it. All right. Well, last line, I promise. 27 twelfths, 
I'm going to do plus 9 halves, minus 2 thirds. I'm not going to worry about getting a common denominator on any of that stuff. But all of these ones, the negative 9, the plus 6, and the negative 2, well, let's go ahead and simplify that down to negative 5. All right, so that is my final answer here. This is as far as I would take it on a quiz or an exam or anything like this. This right here is going to be the area of this little piece. It almost looks like a triangle, but right, that, that red piece has a bit of curvature to it. So that is going to be the area of that piece, the region enclosed. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Good luck tonight. Uh, I will be checking uh, email and Piazza all throughout the day, and I'll try to answer as many questions as I possibly can. I do have a few meetings and things that I have to take care of uh, throughout the day, so I'll try to get to as many as I possibly can. Uh, so feel free to continue using those if you have more questions. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you tonight.